Hi everyone, Linda Heldman here for Canadian Beats. I am beyond excited today to be able to chat with multi CCMA and every other award under the sun uh, winner, uh, a fabulous 22 year career in Canadian country music and someone that has been a favorite of mine for many, many years, Mr. Paul Brandt. How are you, Paul? Uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty excited to be chatting with you here today too. And, you know, it's uh, when you when you put it like that, it makes me really think back to, you know, everything that's happened over this last 22 years. And and uh, it's been really weird since the announcement um, of the the um, you know the, the Canadian Country Music Association you know induction into the Hall of Fame. Um, they they let me know about this about uh, 11, 12 weeks ago now. And they they told I was driving and I almost pulled over like I almost went off the road I couldn't believe what they had said and uh, they actually at the end of the in, at the end of the chat that we had they said that uh, it was the first time they'd ever heard me speechless and I <laughs> actually think that's kind of kind of true um, but it's, it's been really crazy like this last um, couple of weeks you know 12 weeks ago, they told me, by the way, that I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. So I've been kind of, you know, waiting until this last couple of weeks to finally be able to spill the beans. But, um, you know, I, I, I got this announcement. Then, you know, My Heart Has a History. It was announced as the most played Canadian country song in history. Mm -hmm. uh, our last song, I'm an Open Road with Jess Moskaluk, went gold in this last couple of weeks. And I was just down in Nashville a few days ago recording new music. So there's this, there's this crazy, like, intersection between the past, present, and future happening right now. And it's been pretty fun. It's been a lot of fun to celebrate with everybody with the announcement. That is great, great. And I love the fact that there's new music coming. Uh, you gave us Frontier back uh, toward the end of 2016, which is, and you had that on vinyl, which was fabulous. Uh, and it's got I'm an Open Road with Jess on there and uh, all the other fabulous songs on there <laughs> that are not coming to mind at the moment. Get a bed. <laughs> Get a bed. We can get a bed. Anyway, that one. Yeah, it was yeah. great. And for, you know, forever summer and mm -hmm. yeah, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Which was great. Uh, um, we always look forward to hearing new music from you. And I mean, 22 years in the business and you, you're not stopping. You're going to be around for another 22, right? Well, I hope so. I'm, I'm having so much fun, you know. I mean, and for me, you know, to be able to celebrate this with, you know, with you and with all the fans that are that are out there that have supported me and encouraged me throughout the years that have been at the shows and let me do it. I, you know, I, I want to keep doing this as long as, as everyone will let me. So um, I am excited about this new music. We hope to have something out for people to start hearing at the end of August, beginning of September. And uh, it was a great trip, this last trip to Nashville, just getting to hang with the guys in the studio again and um, kind of, you know, plan towards what this next project is going to be like. Yeah, yeah, I always try and kind of keep it one foot in Paul Brandt land so that everybody recognizes what's going on, but at the same time, try and keep it pushing forward and, you know, do something new and, and, uh, and exciting for everybody. So it, um, it feels like it's moving in that direction. These, these last four songs we just recorded, uh, I'm pretty stoked about, and, and I just, I can't wait to share it with everyone. Awesome, awesome. Do we have a, a date when, or an approximate date when this album might be yeah, released? Yeah, it's, it's looking like end of, end of uh, August, beginning of September. Um, we should have a first single, and um, I'll be back down again in the fall to finish up some recording down there as well. So it'll be uh, it'll be cool. You know, I, I, there's always kind of a common thread or, or like a... Um, you know, just sort of a theme that sort of starts to emerge as I'm recording and um, and, and writing for new projects and, and I, I, I a lot of times I don't even really think about it I just start writing and it sort of presents itself and I think this time it's been this idea of the journey and um, you know whenever you're getting ready to take off and go you know, on an adventure, um, there's always that moment where you kind of have to pull the pin and go. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 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 you're, you're on the road and you're gone and you don't really know what to expect. No matter how much planning you do, there's always going to be those moments that you have to sort of roll with it. And, and, you know, that's kind of been the story of my career right from the beginning is, is you just kind of take whatever comes and, and you make the best of it. And uh, that idea of the journey has really been coming to the forefront as I'm, I'm writing and getting ready for this next project. Wow. Wow. And this will be your 12th album. Yeah, you know, it's it, 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 every single time you do it, it's um, it's a lot of work. It, it doesn't matter how, again, how prepared you are. You're always jumping in and, and trying something new, and something will go sideways, and it'll, you have to get it back on track. And it's a wonderful process, and I, I just love the creative process and being able to, you know, just kind of. Um, 
you know, keep keep molding it and changing it as, as things are, are coming to shape. And, and then when you finish it, you feel proud of it and you're excited and you get it out there. But then you always end up looking back at it and going, you know, maybe I would have done it a little bit different. And there's always sort of this balance between, you know, demanding perfection and then accepting what you end up with, you know. And, and uh, that's, um, that's a really fun part of what I get to do. Mm -hmm. Great. So with the release of a, an upcoming album, does that mean a tour? I'm hoping, yeah. I, I really am excited to get back on the road again, and we've started talking with the team and with the band, and, and just getting everybody prepped for that. And, and uh, I would I would love to be able to get back on the road again, and we'll make sure that we make make that big announcement so that everybody knows as, as soon as we have everything everything uh, set to go. Great. We we really would love to see you back on the road, especially in Ontario, because those are the dates that I can get to. Uh, Perfect. Well, so, we want to make it convenient for you. Well, awesome. Come to Sudbury, make Sudbury a stop, uh, make Oshawa, you know, wherever. I'll, you know, driving distance of about four hours, I'll be wherever you are. It's a deal. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Speaking of tours, there, there is actually, there's so much we can talk to you about. But speaking of tours, you always bring fresh new talent on the road with you. And you have actually given starts, because of your tours, to some really interesting people. Um, I think one of the first tours I saw, you had the Wilkinsons out on the road with you. You've had Aaron Lines, uh, Derek Rattan, High Valley. Those are just a few. You know, it's, uh, it's always fun for me, you know, being in the business and, and um, you know, getting the opportunity to work with different creative people. Um, you know, you, uh, you look for opportunities to be able to help each other out, and all of those artists that you've mentioned have done that for me as well. You know, they've been very supportive and encouraging, you know, whether it's um, out there, you know, when we're on tour or behind the scenes, you know, just chatting or writing together or hanging out together. And, and um, you know, I, I think some people might look at it like, you know, I've, I've been bringing new artists or people who some people didn't know about out on the road, and, and they, you know, benefited from that. I kind of look at it more in, in, from the standpoint that, you know, we've been working on things together and we've all benefited from it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I love the input that I get from everybody that I work with um, being on the road. And, and I'm looking at people, you know, even, you know, someone that you didn't mention, not in the country genre, but Greg Sabell, you know, and, and his pop music and his career and, and the incredible successes that he's had over the years. He, he, he helped me to write the song, I'm an Open Road. And that song never would have made it into Jess's hands and, and allowed her to do what she did with it if it hadn't been for his talent. So it's, it's kind of, you know, it's a big community effort and a big, you know, um, team effort that makes it all come together. And, I, I, you know, the hope is that everybody will get something great out of it. It is. It is. I love Greg. I love He's a sweetie. Uh, He's I have his guy. I have his albums as well, and I love listening to those uh, too. They're just his harmonies and everything he does with you and the rest of your band. I mean, it just it always sounds great. Cool. Definitely. Definitely. Now, you are more you're all about the music, but you're actually more than the music. You also do so much charity work, and you have supported so many charities over the year. It, uh, over the years and it's just it's incredible uh you're a huge supporter of world vision they're always at your shows and they're it's it's just like it's not a paul brand show without having world vision there um uh, you are currently doing stuff for not in my city which is raising awareness about human trafficking uh, tell us a bit about those yeah, you know, um, it's been really a, an amazing uh, opportunity over you know, over these last 20 years to get to know a, a number of different charitable organizations. And starting with uh, the Build It Forward television series that we did with CMT, mm -hmm. um, we started a foundation that is now called the Buck Spring Foundation. And uh, a lot of our charitable efforts now are, uh, you know, directed through Buck Spring, and we look for opportunities to work with other organizations and help them to do what they do as well. And I, uh, you mentioned the Not In My City initiative. Initiative. And, you know, it was probably about a decade ago I was first introduced to the idea or the concept of human trafficking and what was happening with that around the world. And I never imagined that it would be something that we would see at such high levels here in Canada happening the way that it is today. There are more modern-day slaves today than there have been at any other time in history, in wow. human history. And most people don't know about it. You know, as I'm talking about it with people, it takes them a good half hour to 45 minutes to really even clue into what I'm saying. It's like, wait a minute, what did you just say? Um, the average age 
percentage of being trafficked in Canada, the first time that, that um, children are trafficked, is usually at 12 years old. Mm-hmm. That's the, the average age. And um, you know, I when I started, you know, being made aware that this issue was growing in Canada, and that in the last eight years, reports of human trafficking just here in Alberta have doubled every year in the last eight years. It, it really made me kind of, you know, look into my own heart and go, okay. What am I going to tell my kids, you know, my little six-year-old girl, my nine-year-old boy, what am I going to tell them that I did about this problem someday, this public health crisis? And it made me want to step up and do something. You know, I think we all have different capacities to do things, depending on what our talents and abilities are, but we all have the same responsibility with this issue, and, and it's to talk about it. It's to educate ourselves about it, be aware that it's happening and admit that it's happening and look for ways that we can support our local law enforcement uh, and cities to be able to make sure that they're making the right decisions to fight against this this horrible crime. Um, so we're launching the Not In My City initiative July 6th uh, here in Calgary. Um, and, and right now it's mostly just awareness mode so that people will learn more about it. So if people go to notinmycity.ca, uh, they'll find all of the online resources that they can use to make some noise online and let people know about what's going on with human trafficking in Canada and take a stand to say that it's something that they don't want to see happen anywhere. And uh, it's, it's really, you know, it's exciting to partner with people uh, who support the music um, and, and do these amazing things using music that literally can save lives. And it, it really, for me, it's, it's the reason I do what I do. Wow. Wow. Who knew? Even in our own country, this is happening. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's absolutely mind blowing to see that you know these traffickers are targeting large entertainment and sporting events across the country, and uh, they they see a demand there, and so they move kids um, to these areas to be exploited for sex, and and it, it's one of those things when you hear about it the first time, it's really almost unbelievable that that you hear it, but when you let it sink in, and you realize what the reality of this actually is. Um, you start to get kind of angry and it makes you want to make sure that you're on the right side of history and step up and, and do something to save these kids who never would have chosen a life like this. Mm-hmm. Wow. 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 That, that kind of leaves me speechless right now. <laughs> it's kind of hard to go on with the rest of this. Um, you also have um, a partnership with Smith Built Hats. And yeah. Yeah, I can talk a bit about that. You okay. know, the Smithville uh, project has been really a fun one for me. Um, I, I've been working uh, at Mount Royal University as the storyteller in residence there, and it's kind of a fancy title, but what it means is um, the business students take the Paul Brandt brand and they do social enterprise projects or business enterprise projects where they can, um, you know, they can actually build something that is going to be sold or they can do, you know, a project like the Not In My City project that I just spoke about that they mm-hmm. were helping me out with. But the, the Smithville project was to raise awareness and funds to um, uh, ensure that um, uh Rodeo cowboys um, and, and cowgirls who are, you know, at rodeo events um, have the resources that they need for education and also for medical support related to uh, concussion and concussion awareness and prevention. Um, there was a, 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 a rodeo cowboy bull rider named Ty Pozivon who uh, passed away in this last year related to concussion syndrome. And, you know, a lot of the main um, sport leagues now have very strict concussion protocol, but that's something that still um, is, is not in effect um, everywhere in rodeo across North America. And so what we're trying to do is raise awareness for that and to raise funds so that um, at rodeo events there can be uh, medical professionals that can assess and educate and treat um, uh, concussions that, that happen as a part of the sport. You know, I love rodeo and have been around it, you know, my entire life um, through the Calgary Stampede and watching what happens there. And, and I, you know, we don't want to in any way, you know, um, take any kind of a stand against the risks that these, these people take to do the sport. We celebrate the sport. We just we want to do everything we can to support them, and, and so the um, this initiative with Smithville hats. When everybody when anybody buys one of the black hats that does good things, or even the white the straw hats that we're selling, they, they also do good things too. And uh, and p- part of the proceeds from the sale of, of these hats will go towards concussion awareness and prevention in rodeo. Wow, that's great! And all this information can be found on your website at Paul Brandt. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Just to check it out at paulbrandt.com or follow at any of the socials, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Instagram at I, I'm Alberta Bound or uh, Paul Brandt uh, for Twitter or the Paul Brandt official at Facebook. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. I, I know we could talk for hours because you've just got so much history and you do so much good work and we really appreciate everything you do. You're a fantastic ambassador for Canada uh, and your home city of Calgary. You just do oh, so thanks much. Thanks so much. I, I really appreciate you taking the time today, Linda, to, to chat and, and uh, uh, make sure you say hey to Bernice for me. It's always fun to get to <laughs> catch up with you guys and um, and just see what you're up to. So we'll, hopefully we'll see you out on the road pretty soon. I hope so. I ho well, definitely I will be in Saskatoon, so I'll be there for your when you get your award, and hopefully we can talk then. It would be great. Absolutely That'd be great. great. I'll look for you. So, so that is the uh, CCMA Legend Show. A tribute to yesterday and today it will be at the TCU place on Friday September the 8th and there's you Lisa Brokop the Hunter brothers Carolyn Don Johnson Madeline Merlot Brian Sklar and Ian Tyson that will be a fantastic show absolutely fantastic I can't wait it's gonna be a lot of fun to be out there and, and just celebrate with everybody mm-hmm mm-hmm all right I know you got to go, but thank you so very much for this time, Paul. It's been You're fabulous welcome. to talk Thanks to you. Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thanks. Paul Brandt, and I'm Linda Heldman for Canadian Beats.